and uh, a very good day uh, everybody hopefully we are live uh, <clears throat> in the chair tonight we've got uh, John and J4Z John have you noticed that on my live streams now in the UK we say Z and in the US they say Z mm -hmm. but I have started to say Z <laughs> oh no <laughs> so, I, I use Z so <laughs> I yeah, guess we're just do you really amazing yeah. okay fine um, I'm just going to ask the folks in the live chat whether the balance of our two audios is roughly about right. This isn't the BBC. We're just, you know, we're just having a telephone chat on StreamYard here. And you kind guys have, have agreed to uh, call in. So I'll have a look in a minute and have a look at the live chat, which we've got over here. I see we've got some of the, just welcome some of the spanners. Um, Tom and Jim and a few other people. Duncan as well. So I'll just flick to this camera here because I just wanted to cover through what we're going to be doing tonight. Um, well, it's tonight anyway in the UK. Uh, local time, John, mid-afternoon for you, is it? Four o'clock. Four o'clock. Okay, well, we're nine o'clock here in the US. Sounds good, says Tom, for both. Fantastic. John and I, we're going to build up from a single vertical all the way through to a parasitic array, a phased array, then we're going to move into three elements, and that will be the three in a row, but there's a triangular element as well that I want John and I to talk about because I've got a video you can watch after this where John explains how he built a triangular array for me, actually, and I feel very guilty, John, I still haven't installed that, but one of the reasons we're having this conversation is I'm getting near that point now. And uh, so we'll do parasitic arrays, then we'll do phasing harnesses and how, where velocity factor comes in and, and things like that. Um, then many, oh, about two years ago, I was talking to Tom about a pair of phased arrays, which somebody, I think in, I think it was either CQ Worldwide John or CQ WPX, somebody made a pair of phased arrays and phased them together, right? And they nicknamed it the flamethrower. So we'll do, we'll cover that as well. And then we'll cover a, a fantasy project of mine called the Double Flamethrower, all right? And then I've got one super fantasy antenna, which would require 24, um, <laughs> 24 DX commanders, right? But anyway, <laughs> we'll, we'll come to that in a minute. And I've just realized after this, John, that I am actually starting to overheat with the lights on and my pullover on. So I'm going to ask you a question. You can shoot. I'll take my headphones off, take this off, and then I'll be back to normal again. Okay, okay. So now you have just come back from, what is the island called? St. John, USVI. St. John, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, which is the US Virgin Islands. That's what they call it. Correct, yeah. Okay, but you were running at, was it actually a parks on the air event as well? It was, that yeah. You... So I'd rented oh. a house to be purposely in the park and, we um we ran parks on the air from uh, the park numbers kilo zero zero six six virgin island national park i ran in the park four years ago and and did some on the beach activations this time the house was located in the park so i ran from the house uh dx commander expedition which is the ramped up version of what i took in 2018 which was the prototype uh that you had uh had just started to introduce i can't and, believe uh, that we got we got it running and uh we ran close to 3,000, right at 3,000 contacts um, yeah. for, the, for the thing. I, I, you know, I can't say enough for the antenna. It worked great. Um, of course, vertical near saltwater, you know what that means. You get a little bit of uh, push off mm. of that. So uh, yeah. it was just fantastic, brother. Yeah, it's fantastic. So, okay, well, well, let's start with a single vertical, if you like. Now, you and I both... By the way, I kind of trust modeling, software modeling from the point of view of roughly what it's probably going to give us from, on a far field plot. All right. Mm -hmm. Roughly. OK, so I don't want to go down this loop of some people go, oh, yeah, but it's not very accurate and whatever else. I believe the mathematics was the moment method. I think someone discovered it maybe in the 50s. John, you might know more about that than I do. But the mathematics exist. So mm -hmm. if you if you can interpret the mathematics and stick it in a piece of software, then you can end up with a, a reasonable plot. Now I happen to have 
um, ready to rock here. I've got a lot of stuff ready to rock, actually. But if I press this button, <laughs> I've got the double fantasy uh, antenna ready here. So I'll let me get rid of that. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to show that till the end. No, 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 it's fine. So um, you can quite easily build in N1MM. I'll just build an antenna at 10.2 meters high and I'll wire one base. In other words, I'm going to put a red dot at the bottom of this, uh, which is our coax. And I've, I've put, put a ground. I've got about 32 radials at, at, uh, at the farm. So that's kind of roughly how I just leave it like that. And I hit the start button and it's telling me it's on the wrong frequency because I want about 7.2 megahertz. So but this just gives us a baseline, you see. The baseline, I'm coming down to about 5 degrees, and it's giving us a number of minus 4.6. Now, John, you understand <laughs> this baseline that I like to use mm -hmm. of minus five, uh, of 5 degrees off the horizon. You probably get it. A lot yeah. of people say, don't get it. They say, yeah, but um, what happens if my DX is coming in at 10 degrees or 3 degrees? But we need we need a baseline somewhere, don't we, where we can yes. go, okay, you well, let's you just... compare things. Uh-huh. Yeah. So when you build another antenna in software, you can go, oh, what was the other one we built? 5 degrees off the horizon, mm -hmm. which is a fairly safe bet for the three, 4,000 mile, you know, reasonable skip yeah. from, that would be from your place to Europe, you know, a good somewhere before five, six, seven degrees. So that's fine. So our vertical, which is, we don't need anything other than a bit of 50 ohm coax and we'll get a better than SWR. What do you reckon, John? 1.5? 1 1.516, 1 1 somewhere in that neighborhood. You uh -huh. get 35 ohms for a, for a perfection. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. For, for, 35 ohms is what you're going to be looking at. So somewhere in there, you'll yeah. be fine. Yep. And with a bit of coax run and yep. whatever else, you, you're even a radio without an ATU would be fine with that, wouldn't it? Sure. Yeah, no problems at all. And when you went to St. John then, were you running any sort of ATU? Or? No, I didn't Didn't run the ATU at all. ATU at all. I had. I have an FTDX-10, so it has an internal ATU, but I said, no, we're not going to – we didn't need it. I mean – Pointless. Right. Everything was – um, I think the worst band I had was 40, and 40 was at about 1.5, 1 1.6. 1 um, uh -huh. I tuned it down to get 15 a little better. Okay. Uh, to make sure I had 15 dead on, because I, I, with the sun cycle, I wanted to work 15 a bit. So. Sure. Um, but yeah, I was everything was between you know 1.2 and 1.7 at the worst case. Okay, worst. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that is a single vertical which we all know and love, and. Um, I don't know about you, John, but years ago I tried a couple of verticals. I just couldn't get them to work, and I don't know why. And I think maybe I was in a housing estate here, and I am using it on receive only and trying to gauge what my transmit is. Mm -hmm. And if you're in a housing estate, it's the wrong thing to do. So but if you've got a couple of runs of coax out to your backyard and you've got a dipole and a vertical and you've got a bit of DX... Mm -hmm. Do you mind if I just compare the two? And I think you'll find he'll say, oh, yeah, you're an S point better or whatever. Right. Single vertical. So this masterclass with John and I is about gain. So gain gives you um, normally you, you take your bubble of RF. And if you're going to squash it over there, it means you're going to lose somewhere, don't you? All right. Mm -hmm. We call that front to back ratio. John, do you find front to back important in modern in running pileups and parks on the air? Not really, I was thought. No, because you you want to take as many as you can, so you're listening for all over the place. Now, if you're working DX and you're chasing DX, yeah, you want that front to back so you can clear out anybody who's coming in behind you that might be interfering with the DX signal coming in. Yeah. Um, you know, for me in a contest, I would much rather run an omnidirectional antenna yeah. than a directional antenna as a as a hunt and pounce kind of guy, mm. if you're if you're the calling guy in a contest, then you definitely want a directional antenna so you can focus it where you want it, and it's going to knock down everything coming off the backside that you yeah. don't care about. Yeah, do you know that that's that's funny because we're on the Sunday morning just before I started streaming on ten meters with my big evolution hybrid thing, I scored with Peru, then China, South Africa and then into the US. 
I couldn't have done that with a Yagi. Nope. All within no. 10 minutes. It would have, I, didn't even, I wouldn't have even known that the South African existed because he would have been off the side, which is probably about the worst. Right, ladies and gentlemen, game. Okay, so we're going to go back to our our little little thing here and we're going to build a little parasitic okay we're going to put the parasitic behind this one i can't remember i think i just put eight but roughly eight eight and a half meters behind have you ever done a parasitic yeah we John? ran i've done a couple different parasitics uh two element and three element um more experience with the two than the three yeah um but yeah two twos and threes three triangle two but we'll talk about that in a bit okay uh, i'm not worried about the swr and the impedance i could muck around i'm just giving people a roughly idea okay let's just head at five degrees of horizon so where whereas moments ago we were had minus uh, just under minus five just well, slightly better than minus five i think john it was mm -hmm. is at five degrees off horizon now this is saying that all around here and i'm reading these numbers up here we're about four and a half db better now you've run a two element array i think in mm -hmm. the past haven't you right does it feel like four or five db better when you're actually running it on the receive side yes it does it, it you know uh, in the front to back helps a whole lot because you're clearing out a lot of a lot of stuff you don't want to hear, but um, and you'll hear people and and you know it's it's hard to tell because people will give you all kinds you know if in a contest you're five nine five nine five nine it doesn't matter yeah uh, but if you're just talking to somebody and you run you know a five seven to somebody and then the next time you you know you come to them you turn you know you run the parasitic and you're five nine plus then you know you're gaining something and you know every three dB of gain is doubling that signal strength so but it's half an s unit so yeah um so you need six db again to gain an s unit so if yeah. you go from s8 to s9 it's six db six db of change yeah indeed yep. now it's funny enough there's a couple of people who called me on the contest and i could nearly squeeze the call sign out Mm -hmm. I I literally two or three times in that contest, I wanted that extra three dB. Do you know what I mean? I could have really done with it, either on their end or my end. When you modeled that antenna, how much gain did it give you being elevated like that? The big tall one. Yeah. The ten. Um, two point at five degrees, yeah. just under three dB. Wow. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. I, I tell you what, I heard you in St. John, and you were just absolutely smoking down there. Really? I was, but I, my little hunter, what PP shooter wasn't getting up there. Yeah. So I couldn't break the pile up you had. So to confirm, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you can see this, we've got our main coax coming up to a vertical and which I'll do in a different color. We have vertical here and we've got some radials. Radials will cover maybe later or another day. This, this, um, element this element here isn't connected to the radials because we've got an SO239 with the center and with that coax and that um, the center of the coax is going up the element and the braid is effectively connected to the radials now what we've done here is next door to it I've modeled it roughly eight and a half meters in fact, Rowley has done some good tests. Um, eight and a half, eight point seven meters. He found on forty meters, so half that on twenty. Um, so we're, we're going about eight and a half meters that way, and I'm just building another one. But I am physically grounding these elements to that. There's a physical connection between the driven element and the radials. Is that how you do it, John? exactly for parasitic yeah that's exactly yeah. how you want to do it you basically make a reflector out yes. of that back, back element and it pushes the rf in the direction of the um, opposite the, the reflector indeed and i reckon about five percent give or take longer on this one oh well, if that's x we'll call this one y five percent longer then we end up with and i'll press this button here um, so in this uh, drawing, the uh, parasitic reflector would be on the right-hand side over here. 
and and our going going over there. And it, it's funny if you play with the distance between the two elements, it'll change that pattern quite a bit. Now it does yeah. change your SWR as well, so you have to be careful with that. But you yes. can you can actually stretch that pattern uh, to as give far it as you push. dare. Yeah, because ladies and gentlemen, sometimes um, the three things are after front to back gain and SWR. <laughs> you can't have it all. <laughs> two, two you can have, three you yeah. cannot. <laughs> you just can't have them all. Exactly. So you get a fantastic front to back, fantastic gain, and SWR, which is off the scale. You've got to remember, this is a coax fed world we're living in tonight. Okay, good. All right, so that's fine. Um, now, the other thing we can do is I'll just go back to this screen here is that at the front, so if we've got eight and a half meters there, we could come to about here, we could build another one. And again, this one would be about 5% less. And I have a pre-prepared one, which we can quickly show you what the- Always prepared. Yeah, if not, we'll just draw, draw it. Reopen, oh, I've called it a Yagi, but this is, this looks like this. Uh, it doesn't look, but the one on the right hand side would be slightly taller than the one on the left hand side and this happens to be tuned on or about 7.1 hopefully you can see this okay oh, if yeah. i go to the far field plot whereas we are at about zero db gain uh now we're at 1.1 so maybe just maybe we might have gained one db yep. just maybe now, have you had much experience with three and two, or did you only I've, build a three once? I've only built the three, the, the parasitic only in, in a Yagi configuration, only one time. Yeah, and, uh, it worked really well. I I couldn't, I didn't couldn't compare it to the two, so uh -huh. you know, build them at a different time. But I mean, the pattern looks nicer mm -hmm. from its front to back. Yep, sure does. And in fact, we can press a button here and do some cool stuff. Um, you can see it flattened out that back where the other one was kind of bubbled out the back a little bit. This one's flattened it off. Yes. A bunch. So there you go. Yep. Now, John, you can you just talk through us what people call um, a 3 dB um, gain pattern? Okay, so... When you talk about beam width for a for a, uh, a Yagi or any kind of directional antenna, you talk about your highest point of gain as being the center point, and then you go 3 dB of loss on either side. So you take that measurement. So if we have at zero degrees, we've got you know 3 dB of gain, and you sweep back out where it goes to zero dB of gain, whatever the difference in, in the angle there is. So let's say it's 15 degrees then you would have 15 degrees on the other side of that. So your 3 dB band uh, beam width would be a total of 30 degrees. Now, this one's probably closer to mm, probably what? 90, uh, minus two. Where's minus two here? Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, okay. Yeah, like nearly 120 degrees on yeah, that 120 one. 120 degrees, okay. Uh, 3 dB. Mm -hmm. So in other words, in the UK, if I face that west roughly then the north part of that curve would get from seattle down to florida mm -hmm. the middle would be getting mexico and then the southern part i would be getting brazil chile falklands mm -hmm. and on 40 meters long path and uh, new zealand and um, australia yeah. okay so now there's a different way of cooking this so let's go back to here. Uh, we'll draw this time two um, verticals with appropriate number, and they're matched this time, aren't they, John? Mm -hmm. Same distance, same length. That's it. So we've got two pieces of coax. Well, I'll tell you what, John, I'll give you something to talk about. I'll draw and you can chat. Sure. Is that how we've got a piece of coax coming up here, right? Mm -hmm to let's just say to start with john let's just start with a t-piece and we'll feed them both to okay. start with so we'd have a t-piece here wouldn't we yep 
and then does it matter how much coax we've got to each one so that's a that's a loaded question some people tell you <laughs> it doesn't matter yeah um, but in in reality when you look at the physics of it you really do want to to optimize the antenna you want to have a specific length of coax there okay from the t piece to the to the uh, the driven element on both of those okay so uh i think it was alan chrisman i think that's the correct name first name but uh -huh. chrisman method he uses 280 to 84 degrees pieces of coax to feed the two uh verticals and mm -hmm. then he loops in a 71 degree piece right that does the phasing and these bits here mm -hmm. if i've got a different color would that be, I mean, because traditionally, if you were doing a phasing harness between the two, mm -hmm. these would be, what, 75 ohm? Yeah, 75 ohm. You can do them with 50 ohm. It just changes the figure just a little bit. Okay. Yeah. So if we've got, and we'll do velocity factor in a minute, but effectively, if you've got a quarter of a wavelength of 75 ohm to this one, mm -hmm. and a quarter of wavelength of coax to this one, at 75 ohm and these are both 50 ish mm -hmm. we should roughly end up with about 50 ohms coming down here exactly give or yep. take right yep. okay it balances the antennas out right so is there any advantage of just doing that and well take it from me i think i might have one pre-prepared doesn't really matter if i don't you almost get, it depends who you read, array solutions, uh, say up to 3 dB, but effectively what's happening is um, your, your gain is going through the middle, all right? And there's not a lot. It's not quite omnidirectional, right. but you're getting maybe 1, 1.5 dB extra gain through the middle, all right? Mm -hmm. Sure. Now then, let's just talk conceptually mm -hmm. is uh so what we can do then john well maybe you can tell them yeah. if we delayed this one mm -hmm. we can add another piece of coax to it can't we sure and you basically do it with a relay you loop in another piece of coax and you switch between which direction you want it to go now it's it's counterintuitive right so if i put the delay in to your right hand side Callum, mm. then the RF is going to go to that right hand side. Okay. Because I'm pushing, I've got direct connection to the left hand side and it delays, delays the signal going to the right hand side. So when that left hand side hits the right hand side, they go in phase yeah. and they take off in that direction. Right. So, so you got the wigglies effectively come up, Let's just say we've got no relays or anything. We've just got a T-piece here. Mm -hmm. And then, effectively, we've got a longer piece of coax sitting in here. Right. And uh, somebody did some experiments, and it was about 70 degrees. Mm -hmm. Now, let's talk what the hell 70 – what it actually means, John. I think it would be a good idea. Yep. So uh, this is all about sine wave, isn't it? Yep. Yep. So you have your sine wave, and you draw it through the sine wave – so in the center, you're at 90 degrees, right? Or I'm sorry, at, at 180 degrees. You have 90 at the peak, 180 in the center. So 90 there, yep. And then 180 in the center. And then you go 270 and 360. So, um, and that gives you your full wavelength of one. So if mm. you talk about... So yeah, if this was on 40 meters now, yeah. and you just put a carrier out... Mm -hmm. It's not, it's about 42 meters, but the yeah. distance from there to, to there mm -hmm. is, I don't know, whatever, 41.5 meters yeah. or something, right? Yep. So, right. So when somebody wants to, has done some experiments and has mm -hmm. said, well, what, what you do, Callum, is find me a 71 degree piece of coax which is this bit. Yeah, how far it's going to travel at, for 71 degrees of that coax, right? Of that, is that, that is that's right, isn't it? Yeah. Which is, um, uh, is that 360 divided by? Yeah, you can do it that way. There's 360 divided by uh, by the frequency and or the length, and that gives you how many 
per degree, how many inches or how many meters per degree. Mm. And then you can multiply that out and get 71. There's another way of doing it. And you, you use what they call a check frequency. So uh, the easiest way for me to explain it here without getting into some serious math is just take your, your distance divided by 360. And that tells you how many degrees and then just multiply it by whatever degree you want. Indeed. So 7184 exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fine. Yep. And so in this case, if that really was 42 meters mm -hmm. and we're after, let's say, a 90 degree piece of coax, it would be uh, 21, uh, 10 and a half. Yep. In, in that, if, it, if you were after 90 degrees, it'd be 10.5 yep, meters. Mm -hmm. Now then, In reality, we can't do that because we've got something called velocity factor, haven't we? Exactly. Yep. So okay. Yeah, How do we describe velocity factor regarding coax to the people back home? Okay. So velocity factor is the difference between the speed of light in free space and the speed of light inside that coax. So in free space, you know, the velocity is what is it in, in 300, 300 me, uh, 300,000 meters and in, yeah. in, in, um, in, in the metric. And so when you travel from point A to point B, it's 300, 300,000 meters per second. Yeah. When you go into coax, it's going to be a little bit slower. So yeah. it's got to travel through the medium because it's bouncing around inside that, that coax. Yeah. So it's going to be a little slower. So you have to take the percentage of that. So it might be, you know, 85% or 86% of the speed of light is actually what the travel distance is. So Indeed. in order to, in order to work through the, the make to sure that you're electrically the same and you travel the same distance, you have to account for the velocity factor. So you multiply by the distance by the 0.85 and that gives you your actual overall distance for the cut length. Sure. So if somebody says, oh yes, you're going to need 10 meters of coax less the velocity factor, mm -hmm. it would be 85% of 10 meters, which would be 8.5 meters. Mm -hmm. Okay. Exactly. Now, some people can get very confused about all that, and that was a long-winded way of saying there's a length of coax you go to need, <laughs> which is called a phasing harness. Exactly. Right? Yep. Right. Uh, they're fun to build, too. I say again? I said they're fun to build, too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, to recap then, and I will redraw this in a minute. Um, we've got the two feed points, and then let's upgrade, if you like, this static thing with the mm -hmm. T-piece. Uh, and I'll just chat for a minute, I think, if, unless I get it wrong, uh, John. So instead of having a T piece here with a coax coming up and just teeing to each of the two antennas, and th these are equal, mm -hmm. these are equal lengths, we'll take our coax and less velocity factor and that sort of thing, and we're adding in a piece of coax. So if we make a little box here and some relays, we can effectively add in a piece of coax, which is our delay line, mm -hmm. right? And we can switch that to either the left-hand one or the right-hand one. Click, exactly. click. So uh, have I shown them back home? Yes, here we are. So let's press this button here. So, and this is a three element. So let's delete one of these. Then you have to make those equal, Callum, as well. We do, we do, we do. And I will get to that in a minute. Okay. So uh, let's do that now, actually. So 10.1 and 10.1, give or take. Um, in fact, I'm going to have uh, minus four and plus four to balance it out. Minus, so I'm giving this about an eight meter spacing. Okay, the two of them. So there we are, two identical verticals, and we can feed them both. We've got wire, let's make that wire one at the bottom, and let make this one wire two at the bottom. 
So at the moment, we've just got the T piece coming to the middle. And if we just calculate that and look at the far field, oh, John, it's gone it's wrong. It's a little egg shape. Oh, yes, yeah. it's because they're not quite the same length, look. Yeah, and the one, the one thing when you build something like this is you have to make sure as best as you can to make the impedance of the individual elements as close to each other as possible so the current divides properly. If the current doesn't divide yeah. properly, it's going to throw the pattern way off. Got it. Yep. Uh, good. So if we go down to, say, 5 degrees, we were talking about uh, we've got minus 4.3 at the top and about a dB worse off the sides. Mm -hmm. That's what it says here. And I'm not going to dispute that. I reckon maybe, maybe, maybe it might get 2 dB. I don't know. But right, so this is the point where we can add in an extra length of coax, and it's got it down at the bottom right here, and we can say on our phasing line, well, if I can find my mouse, we can add in degrees. So let's just put in 70 degrees, John. Is that okay? Yeah, 70, 71 would be fine either way. Okay. Now we'll calculate it again. This SWR has gone all... Funny. Yeah, it's gone cockeyed because I think you're on the, uh, it, it looks at element one versus element two. So if you switch that around, I think the SWR will change. Do you think? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. At least it does with my setup. Yeah, okay. That's fine. Yeah, all right. That's better. Yep. So here we are with a little switch box now, John. Mm -hmm. Click, click. We click, can either click. go left or right. Five degrees off the horizon, so we've got uh, fine gain. It mm -hmm. says here 0.4 dBi, so we're probably 5 dB better than we were a minute ago. And off the other side, we've got uh, roughly about the same, well, slightly worse than the regular vertical. So what we've done, we're taking, and if you remember, I did I vi how to visualize your... So take a balloon. And yeah. squeeze the balloon. Yep. Squeeze it. Where... Squeeze the balloon and it and it pushes out in one direction. And that's exactly what the RF does when yeah. we do that. So we can't make any more RF than we've got. We yep. take the boon, you can go, well, we can throttle it here. We can push a bit more over there, but we can't make any more. All right. right. Balloons only get so much air. Yeah. Okay. Pop. Now then, I was playing around. In the, in the winter, a couple of years ago, and I thought a triangular array might be fun. So similar to this, but three of them. All right, now I've got this, you'll be pleased to know, John, <laughs> reopen triangular array. Here we are. So and I'll just show it to you. No. So this is, now, to, to preempt this, um... I better press this button just so they can see. So there's, 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 there's whoops, there's three. Mm -hmm. And all three, uh, I got a feed point. Now, John, I'm just going to read the comments a moment, just make sure everybody's happy. Yeah, no worries. Uh, um, this man says, what is the spacing between the antennas? I personally think it's slightly less than a quarter of a wave, but I don't think it matters that much. It, so, yeah, the the... the the quarter wave distance works well if you're doing a phased array. When you're doing parasitic, you change that a little bit. You need to have them a little bit closer, closer together. Fine. So yep. you'd say about eight and a half yep. meters, just under. Yep. Sort of eighty-five. That's about eighty-five percent. Is yeah, eighty-five ninety percent, and you you know you can play around with the distance to get your SWR right. Okay. Now there there is. T two ways to do this triangle, just like we started off back uh, here, where we had a couple of equal pieces of coax to two uh, identical um, verticals, we can uh, take three elements and we can manually go out and do stuff and add in bits of coax and whatever else. And they're done that. <laughs> yeah. And and you or you could do it parasitically, couldn't you? Do you have do you feed just the one, John, and you have two? So what I did is I actually when when you did that video, 
what is it, two, three years ago, and you were talking about this antenna, and we were talking about it parasitic. I went ahead and built it for field day uh, for our club to run during our field day operation. So I put up three 12, 12 meter mass and built the thing. And when I, what I did is I put a TPC in and fed two in phase with equal length of coax. Okay. And I shorted out the third one. And then we just swapped that around as we needed to turn the array. Wow. So, yeah. And um, it, <laughs> it performed uh, better than expected. I, we set it up the night before field day or day before field day. And the guys were camping out and they called me up at home and said, Hey, you need to get back out here. We're playing around with this array and we're going into Asia like gangbusters on 40 meters in, in late at night. And I'm like, guys, I got to get up in the morning. I'm for a shift, man. Come on. So, Give me a break. Yeah. But uh, they had a great time with it. They were talking all over the place. I think the first contact we made on it, we made it from uh, Rock Hill, South Carolina, just south of Charlotte and, and, into Washington state and we were 40 over uh, going into Washington state with hundred Watts on that antenna. So um, just an amazing, amazing antenna. Now you get lazy cause you don't want to switch it around. Right? Yeah. Cause if it's, if it's booming into one area, yeah. why bother changing it? But we moved it around quite a bit and had a lot of fun with it. Um, it just takes a few minutes to go out there and change it. Just make sure yeah. it ease up while you're out there Yeah, uh, changing things around. Okay. But, okay, then now Mark II version of that mm -hmm. was, and I'll do it. Um, I'll do it. Um, in fact, you've got. Mm, uh, let me draw it first. Let me draw it first. Otherwise, it will be stealing the show. Yep. So, we're going to draw a triangle. Now, I'm assuming, John, we probably need quite an accurate triangle here, don't we, really? Absolutely. Otherwise, the pattern's going to go all over the place. Mm -hmm. So what John's just described is they had a piece of coax coming up to... Now, how did you... Oh, you were feeding any two. Was that right? right? Yep, just any two, and then I had one one that was in a reflector. Got it. So, yep. for instance, and I'll just use this purple here, he was got this T-piece with a couple of bits of floating coax, and he'd feed that one and that one. And then did you have like a... Like an SO, a shorted out SO two three nine PL two five nine. You could unscrew from that. It's exactly what it is. Stole your idea. <laughs> Fine. Move it to this one. Yep. And then take this, unscrew it, and plug it in there. Exactly. That's exactly how it worked. Right. And were all these the same size? Yep. All the same size. And fine. And it was funny because in experiments, I put them put them up individually, tuned them for forty meters. And yeah. then when I put up all three, you have some coupling going on. So we had to cut the lengths down a little bit to get the SWR right. Okay. Um, and I can't remember off the top of my head. I think they were 9.98 meters, something like that. Yeah. Was the uh, proper length for them. But once we got them tuned in, it worked out fantastic. And the SWR yeah. was pretty flat. Um, yeah. I, I put it at right at the center of the band. I put it at one, uh, 717, 150. Yeah, and, okay. Uh, yeah, for the US band, not for the uh, US. Indeed, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got the curve coming up all the way mm -hmm. to 7.3. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so that's fine then. So if we've got, let's say, we've got the three um, antennas here, and let's say we're feeding, we got our T piece here. We got we're using seventy five ohm coax here. Do you think? Actually, I I use fifty ohm coax, not knowing any better, and it okay. worked out okay. And I think that may have played into the 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 length of the the wires as well mm. so um but i use 50 ohm coax it worked just as fine i've tried it with 75 and it you know i didn't really notice a difference okay fine yep. so this now being our parasitic mm -hmm. um i'm assuming that the rf is going to go roughly in that direction straight down yep exactly okay fine so that worked fine now off the back of that that must have given you a little bit of confidence over building this relay box or mm -hmm. did you manually then think to yourself well wait a minute we could because ladies and gentlemen what what john could have done you see is had his three antennas and you could have somehow how the hell do you take a piece of coax and split it into three anyway that's the question i had so that's why i built the box i was trying to figure out how to do it and i'm like well i could take it and then i could you know, put in a piece, you know, have the coax come in and then take wire and stretch it between three of them and just do a center joint. 
uh -huh. and, and figure, well, that would work. That would split it into three and that would work fine. But then how do you get the delay line in there? So then all of a sudden I'm having to build all of these individual pieces with all this delay line. And then I said, hmm, relays, that might work. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So did you man so ladies and gentlemen what john I th what i think happened and you correct me john did you initially feed all three kind of manually somehow and then and put a manual delay line in maybe no i went straight to uh straight to the relay box yeah I, I, right I, I gave up on the idea i figured if i was going to go through that much trouble trying to figure that out yeah i just go ahead and build the relay box okay fine so john built a relay box which has a couple of spare and we've got some pictures in a minute it's got a couple of spare so239s on the side to put our delay line in is that right john yeah exactly now it's so not we, the most efficient way of doing it um do you think no the, the the efficient way of doing it but you you mono band the antenna right and that's what i didn't want to do is you can put in the series of LC circuits like they do for Foursquare. I see. Um, but you're talking about a whole bunch of work for maybe another two, one, two and a half dB a game, maybe. Oh, um, and surely not like, even that much. Yeah, and and the expense of building one box versus you know buying two or three boxes to do different bands. You yeah, know, you know, you're going to lose a little bit with it. Yeah, and and it really depends overall is that impedance between each of the elements right if you get the impedance pretty darn close that current's going to divide properly okay mm -hmm. and that's that's why they put those lc circuits in and mono band it to get the impedance to divide correctly i see the current okay correctly. Yep. right so so what john's saying is that if, if we'd put a circuit in here we could convert it into a dedicated 40 meter kit Mm -hmm. But at the moment, we can change this from a 40-meter delay line to a 20-meter delay line, yep. change the spacing of these to 20 mm -hmm. meters, and now we've got a triangular array for 20 meters. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, while we're here then, let me just see if I can remember where those uh, pictures are. And then I'll uh, show the people back home. Yeah, I did some research on that, and I was looking at um, UN. What is it? Uh, on four UN's DX low manning DX manual. Yes. And had some interesting. There's actually an antenna in there that's a triangular array. And again, they use the LC circuits, and they had some really weird relay <sighs> setups. But um, I've thought about building that one just to see to compare the two. Uh, but um, as you can see, you got three elements in the picture. Or three three relays in the picture, each of yeah. them, are, each of them, and they're double throw, double pull. Okay, uh -huh. so the reason I did that is to save having to put six relays in the box. Oh, I so see. It, it loops in through one, and then if it goes out to now each individual element, it just goes straight out, or it'll loop back through the delay line and then come back out and go to that element. Yeah, so that's that's why I use the double double pull, double throws. Yeah. Yep. So you probably can't see my mouse here, but on the left-hand side of your picture, I can see two SO239s, I think, for the delay line. That's it, exactly. Yep. On the right-hand side uh, of the picture is the feed-in. Mm -hmm. And then at the bottom of the picture here is the three antennas. Right. And then your control line comes in the top. That's it, connector here. Mm -hmm. Four wires. Four wires, yep. Lovely. All right, well, let us um, have a look at uh, this in software and have some fun. So at the moment, I've got wire three, which I don't know what wire three is. Wire three, so. So that's the bottom left of our picture has got the delay line in it. Therefore, I'm expecting more current uh, more rf to go top right northeast is that right yes so let's fire that up and there it is yep so we can do we can force this to look at five degrees and look at that five you're, you're peaking at point it says point six here so we're, we are an s point now 
they're yep. generally better. Yep. We're stealing some RF from the back and pushing it forward the, the, the forward here. And if I approximately measure this, um, yeah, there's the center point there. So 0 0.5, so minus two and a half. I'm on the software anyway. We've got one, two, three, four, five. Yes, I see what you mean. Nearly 60 degrees in that quadrant. Yep. So it 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 was it's not a full 360. I think the the gaps were 20 degrees Callum between the 3 mm. dB lobes. Yes. Um, so and it, I've got that picture uh, yeah. that I can show them actually. I'll just track it down. Ah, here it is. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So uh, John John drew this in Visio just to give us because it was part of his presentation, and I'll find that link and put it in the live chat in a minute. Um, uh, but I'll just tr I'll try and keep up with the live chat. Yeah, it's the only purpose of the relay box for changing directions. Yep, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. just it's, it gives you the opportunity to change directions um, with it. Now, Callum, I I haven't told you this yet, but I built a six way box. <laughs> to switch this thing in six ways. And, okay, um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna double bluff you here. Is so are you doing this? Yep. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. I, Hopefully I the maps somebody, will hold together. Somebody saw the video and asked me to see yeah, okay. if I could build one for them. And I said, sure. And so they contracted me to build it and I built it and I built all the delay lines for them and everything. Fantastic. And we built, we built two sets of delay lines. Um, oh, you've done one, the whole thing. One set for 20 meters, one set for 40 meters. Good Lord. And yeah, I mean, it was, it was a project and, and having to experiment with it, you put 60 degrees in there. I played around with it a little bit. And then again, my research with uh, ON4 UN's deep low band DXing book. Yeah. They spaced theirs at a hundred, uh, was um, 0.29 of a wavelength for the relay, for the distance between the elements. And I thought about it, and, and when you look at it, when you go 0.29, then that actually makes the, the triangle, because of the geometry of the triangle, it's a little closer than a quarter wavelength. When you go to 0.29, it stretches it out enough uh -huh. to make it close to a, you know, a, a quarter wave between them. But they recommended 110 degrees of, of uh, delay. So when I, I talked to the guy out in California, his name's Joe, and I said, hey, I said, I'll build this thing for you. But I'm gonna I'm gonna build you a couple extra delay lines. So I built them one at 60 degrees, one at 90 degrees, and one at 110. Wow. And I told them I gave them all the instructions and I said, take a look at it, play around with it, let me know what you think. Yeah. And um, he's played around with it a little bit and he says it works really well. He's happy with it. Um, he hasn't set it up with 110 degrees, but I modeled it and it looked like it was pretty good. It was maybe a hair better. Okay. Um, but again, it's it's. So I don't know if it's worth the effort. Yeah, okay. Yep. You and I were thinking maybe even 45 degrees. Yep. And I think that's, and a lot, a lot of people come back to me and tell me that's not enough delay, it's not enough delay, it's not enough delay. But when you look at the geometry of a triangle, you know, the height of a triangle is not equal to the length of its sides. Yeah. So the delay is going to be shorter than it would be. So if you have 71 degrees for a quarter wave, yeah. And you start talking about it being shorter. So 60 degrees makes sense. 60, 66 makes sense. Um, why it's going to be a little bit different. Um, but I, I don't know. I've, I've had really good luck with it. We ran this antenna with the three-way boxes two, two years in a row with field day. And it, it performed fantastically. I actually built a setup for 20 meters using, and I ordered the poles from you, those um, seven-meter poles you had. Oh, uh, well, for 20 meters. Yep, and I built one for 20 meters, and unfortunately, I didn't pay attention to what they had the layout, and I shorted me on the control cable, so I didn't have enough control cable out there, so we didn't put it up, but um, I've, I've got all the parts and pieces to put it together, so it's just a matter, some point in time, I'm going to take it out and, and roll with it. I was just thinking then, because <laughs> I know what people are going to say is you know you, you, the thing is once it's built you can't multi-band this it is it's not like you could 
you know, oh, mm. I'll put a Believe 40 me, meter and a 20 meter element there. It's just no. not going to work. No, I yeah, tried it, to do 40 and 15 because they're they're so close in resonance. Mm. And the problem I had when I did it is the SWR curves were diverging. So okay. I could get it right on 40. I couldn't get it right on 15. And, right. and every time I kept getting closer, they would they would counteract each other. So yeah. it won't work. It's, it's a mono band. But if you build the box the right way, you can use it for different bands. You just have to change the antenna. That's all in the lines. Yeah. Yeah. So. But it's better than buying a you know seven or eight hundred dollar box for forty meters, and then you have to buy one for twenty meters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One for eighty meters. So. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, th I think so far we we've covered that quite well. What I'd like to do, and if there's any questions on uh, how John's done that, uh, by all means, shoot. I'll just have a look and see what other slides he had. Um, I press this button here. I pinched this off John's um, uh, video. I'm sure he sent me. You've sent me this uh, before yeah. as well. Anyway, yeah, yeah I think when um, we talked about doing it. We had it there, and that's that's the build right there. It is. So that's exactly the way we built it in the field, um, and like I said, it worked work fantastic I, I really want to play around with that 0.29 spacing um and and a little bit of tweaks to the the relay box to see if i can clean things up a little bit but um i've got some other ideas i've been working on uh with these for, and you've inspired me to to play around with this stuff with the vertical arrays um i've come up trying to come up with a way of phasing the um the three-way yagi to see how much more gain i can get out of that as yeah well. really well mm -hmm. three in a row Yep, three in a row. And feeding all three of them. Feeding all three of them. Yeah, I've always fancied doing that. Yep. So I'm trying trying to figure that out and see how I can make that work. It's, yeah. it's you gotta put some coals in. I'm 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 not gonna be able to make a box that's gonna be um at least to, as far as my research is right now. I can't make it so that I can have one box and just change the lane lines and everything. You've got to have some coals in there to shorten and lengthen things. So Okay, force it. Yeah. Yeah, so you got to run 12 volts out to the pole as well. Mm -hmm. Shorten exactly. a bit. Yeah. Yep. So build them all uh, slightly too short, effectively, yep. and then flick a coil and make them slightly longer. Exactly. And only a whisker, of course. Yeah, it's what three, would you say it was 5% one way or the other? Yes. So, that's right. Yeah, you're going to build you're gonna build them all to the driven element length, mm. and then you're going to switch in your coils to mm. make one longer, one shorter. Um, just uh, to confirm, this distance between this one and this one, then Quarter on the way. triangle, you're uh, you're saying zero point two nine. Right. I, that's what they were saying in in the low band DXing book. I ran them at a quarter wave, point two five wave. Okay. Yep. All right, but okay, so. You've got an inkling that just by spreading it out a tiny bit might give you a whisker more. A whisker more, yeah. Yeah, or better match or something, I don't know. Yeah, the match was pretty good. I mean, the match was less than 2.1, uh, 2 point uh, to 1. Um, I, you could probably tweak it a little bit further and get it down a little bit lower. Um, but um, So the radials, I see the question came up, do the radials from all vertical touch? So in a in a perfect world, if you were doing a permanent install, you would want to tie those radials together and, you know, kind of just whatever you use, wire nuts or whatever, beans, uh, connectors, you know, as long as they're weatherproof and tie them all together. So that's one big radial field. In a temporary solution like field day, we just overlapped them a little bit. And that yeah. was it. So, I mean, you, and you can make them shorter and make them. And double you know, them up. Yeah, and then double up the length. So make them five meters if it's 40 meter ray. Uh, make the radials five meters instead of 16, put 32 down. Yeah. That's simple. And then maybe a couple of long ones. I don't know. Yeah, a couple of long ones. I, I did them all 10 meters when I did it. That's so it. we did have some interaction, but I just overlaid them and, and they were fine. Yeah. We didn't have any problems. So you ran how many quarter wave radials? Eight, 16? 16. Yep. 16. Yeah. Okay. 16, yep. So 32 at about five meters mm -hmm. might have been a nicer, but yep. it doesn't really matter. And you could have then bonded them all together. That's what you're saying. Exactly. If it was permanent. Bonded. Yeah, okay. That's the word I was looking for, bonded. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. 
All right, so um, let me get rid of this now and go back to my program. I just want to make sure I can find my little flamethrower. The flamethrower. Oh, now, is that right. the one Rolly designed? No, I okay. I was so I'll I'll. Or is I'll that the guy in Ireland? To, uh, no, I read. Um, okay. No, it was well. I don't know who designed it. I played around with this. Then somebody sent me a link for um, a couple of guys down the Bahamas for CQ Worldwide or WPX mm -hmm. for years gone twenty meters, and they they faced this very mm -hmm. very specific. You know, they're difficult place wherever the you know Europe or something. Uh, let's do this. So this is uh, I can do edit make stack. And I'll go down to one. Okay, so this was the single parasitic uh, uh, array where we've got, we're feeding, and we started off down here quite a while ago. So it's just two um, 10 meter poles, if you like, for 40 meters, and you would feed one of them, and the other one becomes a reflector. Now, I think on this one, they might both be the same height. No, no, there's a little bit of difference. So this is built for 20, but it's exactly, you could scale it up for 40. You could descale it for 10, um, whatever you want. So if I hit the start button on this, we should get roughly what we had before, which I seem to remember was around and about zero over here. It says minus 1.9 for some reason, but whatever. I might have changed something in the variables. Um, and I've got a bit of a tail over over the right hand side here. So again, it's all back to the balloon, how we're squashing it around. So we could have to we'd have to maybe optimize this. I don't know. It's a while since I've opened this up. Now this somebody asked a question: Could you do this with a pair of hex beams? You can. You could. You can stack. Uh, so the big big contest stations, particularly US, you know, with the 100 foot 150 foot towers might have one or two or three or even four 20 meter five element yagis um four over four over four over four or six yeah. over six over six over six and they have a something called a stack stack match mm -hmm. which is similar to the box that john made for the triangular array but determines where how much current effectively is going to each one and they can take one out take two out take three out so you're after again it's the same amount of rf yep. if they're after japan really long haul stuff they probably only want the top yagi because right. they want it as low angle as possible but europe they might feel they need a couple of three degrees so these guys with the three element with the multiple yagis on the huge towers they're steering that way as well yep. All right. But it's funny you mentioned the hex beams, or somebody mentioned hex beams, because there's a guy down in Florida. His call is KE5EE. -E. He's got a super station down there. I mean, this thing's just small. I don't know how much money he's got tied up in it, but he took four hex beams, Calum, <laughs> stacked them too wide, too tall. Right. So he's got four of them, and he's got them all phased. I've talked to this guy a couple times, and he's got a book coming out on the antenna. I want to see how they phase because it's multi banded. Yeah, I know. How the hell did you? How the hell do you? Does he have a box that? on every in the right in the yeah, middle? I don't know. All I mean, the he, different. He told me he says, "Well, it was a lot of engineering, and and we've got a book coming out." I'm like, "Great, well, just let me know when the book comes out because I want to read about that." You can have to restart the stream, okay, Mike? <laughs> just saying hello to Mike. Hello, mate. Um, let me get rid of you now. Welcome, Mike. Okay, so I took the and it, I, you know, what I'm like. Uh, John, I'm mucking around, mm -hmm. you know, I get bored really quickly and I just muck around all the time, designing things, you know, I've got various shit on my desk here, you know, always got little bits of prototypes knocking around. And I thought, well, what happened if we took this antenna here and phased the two together? Oh, it's gone back to being, oh yeah, I've made, I must have made it a stack again. Stack, yep. I did, right. And the wavelength between the, uh, I'm on 0.55 of a wavelength. So I'm 40 meters, just over half a wavelength. So it'd be 22, 23 meters wide. Okay, so this is actually from one red dot to the next on the 10, on the 20 meter band, it's gonna be about 11 meters. 
Anyway, how does this get on? So we hit the start button and we call this the flamethrower. Um, so this is, f John's thing was a triangle, which is fantastic because you can switch it in any direction. This is fixed, okay? So whereas I fancy, so that's giving us 1.2. Very nice, maybe one and a half dB if we're lucky, because various coax losses and stuff. Better. Um, but you, but could, then, you could phase those, Callum. You, uh, could you? Yeah. If you feed all four of them. Oh, wow. then, what would happen then? Um, you'd be able to switch it back and forth anyways. You would, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, ladies and gentlemen, we're just... Try, the uh, trouble is they're all different lengths so yeah you'd have let to make me, let me just like make it 5.2 and 5.2 yeah and i think check the i, think I might the, have uh, to you got the voltage is 10 on that one it needs to be one okay thank you well spotted all right, we'd have to play around with some yeah, stuff. Yeah, play around with a little bit, but I, I actually played around with that and got it to work. Oh, did you? Time. Yeah, it was, right. uh, it was a lot of fun. Let me just reopen it anyway. So that was, all right. it's all right, it's fine. Now, but the thing is, I'm, because we've got 1,500 poles at any one time in stock. <laughs> <laughs> I think, well, what? The trouble is my my antenna field. I don't know if you found this as well, John. It doesn't matter how much. I mean, Holly Farm is on a fifty-seven acre site, mm -hmm. and for some months of the year, there's no sheep in that field. You know, so I could conceivably, if I was that motivated, go a bit crazy. So instead of going with four poles, what happens if I made this and made a stack of eight? So that would be a horizontal four-four-four mm -hmm. make stack. And it would look like this. Now on 40 meters, oops, you can't yes. see, you have to tell yeah, me. Yep. Uh, so on 40 meters, we're looking at about 20 meters from there to there, two, four, six. We need some radials, seven, eight. So I'm into nearly a hundred meters wide. Okay, I mean, this is, this is phenomenal it's if it was for 40, if it was for 40, 50 meters, if it was for um, 20 meters. So it starts to look like this. God. So for me, I could face that sort of up here could be uh, Seattle, Vancouver coming down. It's, for me, this would be New York, Florida, Mexico. And that's probably about it. That's all I'd get. Mm -hmm. But I'm achieving 4.2 versus a straight move. vertical. Yeah, which, which, by the way... And we'll do this, and I'll just make a note before we go. We'll do. We'll build a straight vertical in a minute over seawater. Just remind me before we go. Yes, sir. Uh, that's going to take a lot of DX tens, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it only takes a little bit of processing power to go. Okay, I mean, what would actually happen if if we did this? <laughs> right. This is sixteen. 16 poles and by the way it's a great match to your coax 42 yeah. ohms 1.27 there's quite a lot of phasing harness going on here though absolutely so there's probably two couple of db loss there but um this is starting to look um very sharp it's basically i mean where do you want you you can either choose new york or or texas you know that's yeah, pretty much <laughs> that's it. it that's it it's literally a flamethrower so, but you see how high it is here. Like if I do uh, the far field plot. Well, Those little moment. side lobes have some decent gain on them, don't they? Yeah. No, not really. Look how wow. sharp that is. Isn't that a funny looking thing? It looks like a fish. Yeah, <laughs> it does, doesn't it? <laughs> And it's funny if you if you have it's a lot of T pieces, a lot of seventy five ohm coax, and mm -hmm. one little flaw in the whole thing, and it would probably be completely cocked up. Yeah. But if you remember, we reop we had this three element uh, array, three in a row. Mm -hmm. Well, you can stack this as well, so we could make that a stack uh, too wide. 
just to see what would happen. Now, this is, uh, oh, I can't remember the width. What width did I say? Make stack. You had 55. Oh, that's yeah. one wavelength. Don't want one wavelength. Five, yeah. I, I, I seem to remember for a, for a vertical with the ground losses and everything else, yeah. 55 seemed to be uh, about right. Where's it gone? I think I've put 55 wavelengths. Yeah, not 0.55. That's better. So th this is a six pole special. Okay. So we Ooh, need six. Nice pattern. Yeah, it is. If somebody wanted to build this, I would definitely do them a cost deal. So it's 3.2, but it's not switchable, really. I mean, the ideal, no. what I would really like is and and i think one of the contest stations on 160 does this they've got this kind of five square thing you know i so, looked at that thing and i haven't been able to crack that yet i think it's this i think it's, it's this exactly that where you've got a three element because he used i could only skip the article he was saying that he has to float two mm -hmm. And then he must have some coils at the bottom of this one, so he can switch that way, or that way, yep. or then this way, or this way. Yep. I assume you would look at that as well, did you? Yeah, I did. I, and I tried to do it in a diagonal too, using like the triangular array. So you would use three of them, you know, the outside two and the center one. Oh. Yeah, and I tried to do that, and I, it. I, I'll send you the files at some point in time, but you can take a look at it. Maybe, you know, again, I, I, I sit there and tinker with this stuff left and right. I'll get a, a brainstorm and say, okay, yeah. let's play around with this. And it'll obsess me for a couple of days. And then I know, okay, and then we move on, it. don't we? Yep. I mean, if, if that is a five square, I mean, presumably you could do something. There's no extra game, but it just gives you more faces Somebody of the clock. Somebody doing a hex, a hex uh, uh, uh -huh. array. And I've tried to crack that and I, it, it it blew my mind, so I said I'm done with that one too. So, mm. yeah, doing six, you know, hexagon on the outside, nothing in the center. Oh, I and see. Trying to do it that way, and and I just I couldn't make it work. Do you? Um... <laughs> Mike says you thought your neighbors at the old place didn't like you. Wait till you key up with sixteen antennas. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you better have a big feel. That's all I. Can say. <laughs> <laughs> I just see some of this stuff. It's quite funny. Oh, that's actually. my buddy Andy. Okay. Over there in Iowa. Hi, Andy. <laughs> hey, Andy. Um, so, I mean, I just think we should have to close this off before we go down by the sea with a single vertical. Yeah. Okay. I think just for the sheer hell of it, all right, I think we should have 3H24. I think we should have 24 DX commanders on 40 meters. So that's, um, you've got a T piece here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight. Then you'd have four T pieces, then presumably two T pieces. You'd have to come all the way back yep. so that everything got the right current at the right time, wouldn't Build you? Build a funnel. Yep, exactly. Yeah. So, but. People on 77s and two metres are doing this for moon bounce, aren't they? Absolutely. Well, with, with Yagis, this is just ground mounted, yep. right? And it's weirdly enough, concept. yeah, weirdly enough, this is cheaper as long as you've got a field, which is uh, Property one, might be a bit much. two, three, four, 160, 200 metres, right, by about 50, give or take. Anyway, so this is a fantasy antenna. Okay, fantasy antenna. You know, there's Which? a park nearby that has a soccer field. Two of them. <laughs> <are> by... <laughs> I'll get lucky to pull up 20, poles. 24 poles. Think how much wire we'd need. God, just the radials alone. Yeah, and I know. Even if you put four radials under each one, that's still quite a bit of wire. Yeah, it's saying eight point seven. You got to put uh, it up on the screen, Cal. Oh, thank you. Hang on. I will do that. Everybody wants to see the fantasy. Yeah, I know. Hang on. It's uh, it's working. Hold on a minute. There we are. Mm, that button. There you go. 
Yeah, so it's just more like a fish now again. Mm-hmm. Boy, that's a beautiful pattern. Isn't it just incredible? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's great if you had, I don't know, I can't even think of an application for this. Oh, change change it to, uh, oh, never mind. I was going to say change it to seawater, but you want to do that with a single. Uh, I think we should just do this one on seawater as well. So the conductivity goes up to 5,000. Yep. <laughs> okay. This is going to be insane. This is going to be, if you built this by the coast, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Drag it all the way down to the bottom. Oh my God! What is that? Nineteen dB. Nineteen dBi. Jeez. I mean, That's 20, I would be better. Twenty-five you know, so, better than the yeah. standard vertical. Uh, is the band closed? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> the band Eleven in the morning, and I'm talking to John. Uh, exactly. <laughs> that you is who uh, you wanted to aim that at. And please, birds, don't get in front of it because they'll God, be falling down for sure. Nineteen. 19 dB. And, and a straight vertical is normally minus 5. So 25 better. Or 24 um, better. So if you took 100 watts, took 100 watts and gave it a kick of around 25 dB. So 20 dB is 10,000. Yep. 23 dB is 20,000. 26 dB would be 40,000. Yeah, good God, I don't wonder what radio. 40K. And then if you had an amplifier. <laughs> <laughs> Put a 1,000 watts into it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I think you're violating the peak-to-peak -peak allowance. <laughs> even, right. in, even in Italy, you're violating the peak-to-peak -peak allowance. <laughs> Effective radiated power, four <laughs> miles. Yep. You've, got, you've got people with wearing lead suits going, don't come near here. Okay, so that's fine. But we will do a straight vertical. And I'll press this button here and you can see what I'm doing. File. And that's why I think I was so loud from St. John, because you get that bounce off seawater straight. In, indeed, yeah. yeah. So we'll just do 40 meters again uh, on the maths here. About about 10 something. Uh, wire one at the, on its bottom. Uh, we'll take, it's about 7.2-ish, whatever. And we're still on five, 5,000. Yep. So normally, I mean, oh, people are giving claim. <gasps> uh, copper wire. So this is the important thing. Why seawater is incredible because right down to the horizon here. So if you've got a sailboat, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's colossal. Uh, yes, so we're about. I, I always. It's about eight nine dB. I don't feel that it's ten dB, but uh, but there we are. So if you're on holiday or you live by the coast, um, so Tom, for instance, M zero R and Y is on the chat tonight. Uh, he had a little seven oh five, and he walked around the Isle of Arran, mm -hmm. and every morning or whatever it was, um, he, he could get a signal, and he would text me. So I'm, I'm set up now, and for, I think, seven or eight days, we spoke every day. Now, he sounded like a 10-watt station a long way away. I mean, he wasn't like, you know, 100 watts, so he just get a little bit more cut. But um, um, with his 10 watts, I think 705 is 10 watts. I mean, I seem to remember, Tom, what was your, if you're still on a live chat, what's his best DX? Um, I, th I think it was like Argentina on 20 or oh, wow. something, you know, which, which for, for us is, is a third of the way around, yeah. around the world. But that's, you know, and I think, have you ever worked on top of a cliff by the sea, John? I have not, no. I've worked yeah. on the beach, but not on a cliff. Hey, if there's not, you can't really have to go west coast or extreme northeast coast to okay. uh, get, get near the cliffs. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah, west coast cliffs are pretty common. Up in Maine, that area, they're pretty common. But, you know, yeah. when you get down here in the southeast or you go to Caribbean, unless you're, you know, or even Hawaii, you, you get some cliffs there, too. But yeah. I did get a contact to uh, uh, Kangaroo Island, 100 watts, using the DX Commander, going out uh, from St. John. So To where, sorry, John? Kang Kangaroo Island, uh, VK land. VK oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. Tony, I mean, uh, for us, the VKs and the ZLs are the real long-haul stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's quite long haul for you, is it? Isn't it? Yeah, it's it's still it's still a good haul. It's almost halfway around. So, 
Um, yeah, he, I worked him on 40 in the morning and then he came to me on 20. Now, granted, he has, you know, a pretty good station down there, pretty big Yagi's, you know, set up mm. on 20. I don't know what he was running on 40, but I talked to him in the morning on 40 and then the evening on 20, uh, which I was really surprised because he came in gangbusters. I mean, he was, he was rocking and rolling coming in. So, um, but yeah, the, the DX commander, I'll tell you, I, I took three antennas down there and of all three of them, it performed the best. Um, you know, the, the only one that was close to it was the off center fed dipole on 20. And I mm. really do think it was, it really had to do with the way that DX commander was set up because I didn't have an optimum set up. I severely misjudged the terrain by looking uh -huh. at the pictures. Right. I was on a 30 degree downslope. Yeah. So, you mentioned that. I saw yeah, the pictures. So, yeah, it was, um, but it, it worked out fine. Uh, it was equal to the off center fed on 20, but every, everywhere else it just crushed it. So. Mm. Well, and also the fact you're off an off center fair dipole on 20 mm -hmm. at i don't know a quarter of a wavelength off the ground how how high off, off, I had off the about depth? 40 i had it had about 40 45 feet well that should work really well i mean yeah. you're by the sea i mean yeah. i wouldn't uh i was 150 160 feet above the sea as we okay. were up on the hill so we right. were about about 150 yards off the beach coming up the hill but we were 150 feet above the sea so mm. you can see you know way out from there where we were at the height we were at so well in which case i would have thought that a dipole should work yeah it worked really Nicely. well like i said it, mm. it, the dx commander just beat on the other bands i mean in 10 15 17 and and 40 it, it smoked it so tom's yeah. saying he was all over the usa in south america on his 10 watts yeah, yeah. but great. he was he was right by the um he was right by the ocean as well yeah and he was running dx commander wasn't he uh, he took uh, an expedition with him. Expedition, yeah. yeah, that's a great um, kind of for travel. Well, um, I've got I've got an announcement to make with the expedition. Is that well, this is a prototype. The plates have got notches in them now. Mm -hmm. We've just started shipping them, so you you take you you just shove all the plates on. None of this threading it through. Okay. They should the that's DX right. tangle go click mm -hmm. right over the top of the. the I made notch. a similar a little bit quicker. Yeah, yeah, well, I was really hoping to get somebody in the club down there. Uh, there was a club that was on Island. I just couldn't get in contact with them. Last time I was down there, I shipped a bunch of stuff down because what I really wanted to do was ship two or three poles down there and go on the beach and play around with two poles. Ideas. Yeah. But couldn't find anybody. So I didn't have room in the luggage for, for two or three poles. Uh, how close to the sea do you have to be before it starts to make a difference? A uh, couple of wavelengths, I would have thought. Yeah, a couple of wavelengths for sure. Um, you know, it, it is salt water. It doesn't necessarily have to be the sea. If you're on a salt marsh, you know, it's going to it's gonna take off. So, mm. uh, Daytona, FPV, single person, beach, expedition. Yeah, expedition. you need an expedition for that. Yeah, uh, and, I, and I set it Tom up on got, the beach. Tom got his set up. Tom, I mean, you'll have to tell us. I, Tom got down to about seven or eight minutes for That's a full right. setup. The only the only challenge on the beach is how do you anchor the thing? How do you guy it? Right. So yes, yeah. He was using he he put um, he put guy stakes in, then he would find a, a big rock put mm -hmm. over the top of the guy stake. Actually, yep. okay. Tom's telling us it's about ten eight to ten minutes. That's about right. Yeah. Okay, if there are any more any more questions, uh, I would prefer we uh, rocks. <laughs> yes, rocks. indeed, rocks work. Rock. Yeah. yeah, it depends. If it's a sandy beach, a bit more difficult. If you got driftwood, that works too. Big pieces of driftwood. Uh, yeah, good point. And then the third one is just got a bit because you get the other two set up, and then you mm -hmm. just get that third. Um. Okay, so rather than John and us waffling away and ruining the end of this with utter baloney. I think we should end on a high and wish everybody a very good week. Yep. And um, thank John for joining us tonight. My pleasure, Callum. Believe me, it's my pleasure. And, um, and, and I think we covered quite a lot. Um, to recap, if you've just joined us, ladies and gentlemen, I'll just fire up my little book. We spoke about a single vertical. Uh, we did the parasitic where you feed one and use the other one as a reflector, which is about 5% longer. Then we went down to feeding them both with uh, 75 ohm coax or 50 ohm. John's worked 50 ohm as well with a T-piece. 
and then how we can put a delay line into that and then fire either that way or that way uh, we, we talk about we spoke about um, uh, phase angle and velocity factor and that in coax the speed of light effectively travels and the velocity factor if it says 60 percent it means you only need 60 percent not 100 percent of the of the size uh, then we spent a bit of time on John's project where he kindly sent me this triangular array and one of the reasons for this phone call or this uh, chat tonight on air was to refresh me exactly how this works because I want to get it up. Uh, and there we are. Have a jolly good week, everybody. Once again, John, you're an absolute star, mate. Oh, and you, um, you are welcome anytime, Mr. Gendron. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, because Carl. I always call him Mr. Gendron. Yeah, I'll it's very kind anything. of very kind of British, Mr. Gendron. Yeah. Lord Gendron, you know. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> I'm not I'm not at Lord level yet. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, right. Alan. Seventy three. Okay. Home. I'll hit the stop button and then I'll wrap up with um with John, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so all the best. Happy week. And I'll see you all soon. Bye bye for now. Bye bye.